OK, let's examine the past four years with Ewan Morgan, uh, Emeritus Professor of US History at the Institute of the Americas, University College London. Professor, thank you so much indeed for your time. Um, OK, rather than uh, write a whole thesis, it's just one question, one answer. What will Trump's legacy be? Well, I think Trump's legacy is defined predominantly by the fact that he is the only US president to have been impeached twice by the House of Representatives. The second impeachment, of course, is still to be played out in the Senate, and it, must, uh, it remains to be seen what happens. But whatever, whether he's impeached or not, it is quite clear that Donald Trump has been somebody who has not respected or observed the democratic and constitutional norms uh, required of an American president. And fundamentally, he has demonstrated authoritarian um, uh, aspects to his presidency. Authoritarians always uh, manufacture a big lie to uh, gain support. And Trump, of course, has been a uh, exponent of the big lie. He's accused uh, any media outlet that criticizes him of peddling false news. Uh, he has repeatedly told untruths, probably more recorded untruths than any president in history. And his use of t the Twitter account to appeal to a base uh, that uh, believes him without any evidence is also highly unpresidential behavior. Interesting. I'm not sure if you said anything positive in that analysis of the Trump legacy. Do you think there's any chance that time will vindicate his America first policy, his rhetoric which appealed to a majority white nation, uh, sometimes almost veering into territory of white supremacy, the idea that he could bully both friends and foes. Will time vindicate any of that? Well, I certainly hope not. Uh, the United States stands for certain values in the world. It may not uh, always observe these values, but at least it aspires to and it is a beacon for uh, democracy uh, in a global world order. And to have a president behaving like Trump did is disastrous for America's international reputation and indeed its soft power. Um, on the issue of uh, making America great again, it's part of the uh, Trump use of uh, the big lie, if you like. Uh, uh, he demonizes the governing establishment. He mobilizes his supporters against it. And we've seen most recently in the uh, uh, provocation that uh, he gave to the crowds to go down to the Capitol. He said that he didn't uh, tell them to invade the Capitol. That's quite true. But fundamentally, uh, he really drove them on. And there was no way of controlling them. That was one of the most appalling episodes in America's history. Yeah, actually, you know what? I'd like uh, to give one more example of how his rhetoric is sometimes by himself uh, slightly opaque and allows him to maneuver around what you are calling lies. When he said around the beginning of his presidency and during the campaign that I'm going to bring American jobs back to the United States, what he didn't tell the people of the United States was that so many of those jobs can't be brought back because they're being done by machines and robots. It's not human beings in other countries that are doing those jobs. So he kind of promised something without explaining that it was almost impossible to deliver on his promise. Okay, what about the time and the moment that Donald Trump became president of the United States? What do you think historically will be the analysis of uh, his presidency? And could it be almost, or will it be couched in terms of the beginning of the end of Pax Americana? Well, on the question of Pax Americana, I think that uh, the United States has already had to come to terms with the limits of its power. Back in the 1990s, uh, flush with Cold War victory, we were talking of uh, a single global superpower running the world. The events of the um, early 21st century have demonstrated that America's power is limited. America is always strongest 
uh, and has demonstrated this since uh, 1941, when it operates in a system of alliances and multilateral institutions that it can lead. The notion that America can police the world on its own was always a fallacy. And uh, it, it didn't take, tr I don't think that's going to be Trump's legacy because that, the, the, that fallacy has already been exposed uh, over a much longer period. With regard to your question about what 2016 meant, in many ways, 2016 is the falling out of two uh, uh, things in the United States, one long term, one short term. In the short term, I think that uh, it was uh, a playing out, the coming home to roost of the problems uh, associated with the Great Recession and financial crash 2007-9. That wiped out a lot of wealth. It hurt a lot of Americans economically. It hurt homeowners. And I think that there was growing resentment at the relatively <clears throat> slow pace of economic recovery under the Obama administration. And Trump promised to uh, wave a magic wand uh, to deliver the good times back again. And of course, coming back to the point that you just made, uh, the loss of manufacturing jobs began in, 90, in the 1980s. And it is due to structural, technological, and international factors uh, that the United States cannot wholly control. So promising to make the good times roll again was always uh, going to uh, end in uh, end fulfillment. But uh, I, I think that uh, that tells us something about the fact that, uh, uh, as well, that there is in the United States a growing cultural and demographic divide. Um, it's not coincidental that uh, many, not all, but many of Trump's supporters are old, angry white people who have seen their uh, status in American society diminish as a result of America becoming more diversified, more cosmopolitan, and very significantly better educated. One factor about uh, Trump's base is that, broadly speaking, it is not uh, educated beyond high school level. Uh, the Democrats are much more successful at appealing to university graduates. The number of university graduates are growing. Uh, demography, for the moment, is on the side of the Democrats. And I think that uh, if the Republicans continue to remain the party of Trump after his presidency, they may win an election or two, but it is not a long-term strategy uh, to become a majority party. The Republicans for the Trump years played on victimhood, the sense that uh, uh, white Americans, particularly blue collar, lower, uh, lower paid uh, and lower educated whites were the victims of a system that now privileged uh, new forces in American society. Professor, uh, the professor, thank you so much. I'm sorry to cut you off. Really, really appreciate okay. it. Thank you. I mean, that's so instructive to hear you give us your analysis about the past four years of the Donald Trump presidency. Ewan Morgan, Emeritus Professor at the University College of London. Thank you.